Today I want to draw the gear system for the PA44. It's not as complicated as the gear system, uh, excuse me, it's not as complicated as the fuel system. So um, it's a bit easier to draw. There's a bit less to think about. To start off with, we're going to draw the hydraulic reservoir. Get the reservoir going on here. And I'm going to label it over here. So there we go. Hydraulic reservoir is right there. We'll get the hydraulic pump as well. Hydraulic pump, uh, the symbol for that is just two circles. We'll need some uh, hydraulic lines running into the pump, there and there, and running out of the pump uh, afterwards, there and there. Cool. Uh, these are intake lines. We've also got some uh, return lines out and out and we've also got a bleed hole okay that one a B alright I drew this a bit too far down I'm gonna shorten this up a bit so that I have room for everything next up is going to be the shuttle valve we'll draw the shuttle valve on here there we go we got the shuttle valve and there we go. So now we've got the shuttle valve right there. Uh, this is going to be closed off right there. Okay, and it takes care of that. And we'll get some of these right there. Cool. All right. And just uh, because, why not? Uh, we might as well label these as well. In and out and over here in and out. Okay, that takes care of that. Moving on, uh, after the shuttle valve we've got the Piper mounting base. Piper mounting base, we're just going to represent that as a line. It's not really all that important. There we go. Piper mounting base. And from here, we move on to a couple of chambers. These are uh, hydraulic chambers. Some people call them plenum. Some people call them manifolds. I have not been able to get a good uh, definition from anyone as to what they really are. For now, we're just going to call them hydraulic chambers uh, because I think everybody can get behind that. So, hydraulic. chambers. There we go. After that, we're going to uh, run some lines and from here we're going to go to the gear cylinders themselves. So we've got the nose gear right here. We've got the right main gear and over here the left main gear. Each one of these is a hydraulic cylinder and what that means is it's connected to the gear itself. So there's the gear, there's the gear, there's the gear. When you increase pressure on the bottoms of the cylinders, uh, the cylinder moves upward and it brings the gear up. If you increase pressure on the top of the cylinder, it's going to push the piston down and it's going to bring the gear down. So that's the way that the, the gear works in general. Now time to connect them up. From the high pressure hydraulic cylinder, or from the high pressure hydraulic chamber rather, you run high pressure hydraulic fluid to the bottoms of the various cylinders. From the low pressure side of the system, you run hydraulic fluid to the tops of the cylinders. Kind of like that. There we go. All right. Finally, we'll draw the emergency gear extend. The emergency gear extend is simply a valve which connects the low pressure and the high pressure sides of the system. So there we go. Now we've got the oh, almost one more thing that I forgot. Uh, we need a thermal relief, which is going to come. Uh, see if I can do that a bit more exactly. I still don't like that. All right, last try. There we go. 
Yeah, I like that. All right, that's thermal relief right there. Okay, cool. We're finally done. Um, we've drawn the PA44 gear system. Uh, now a bit of explanation as to how the whole thing works. So that you've got your gear switch right here, and the gear is already in the down position, and you want to move it up. So you toggle the switch into the up position. As soon as that happens, hydraulic fluid is going to start flowing. Hydraulic fluid is going to flow, the pump is going to engage, and hydraulic fluid is going to flow from here into the pump, and it's going to flow through here. The shuttle valve right now is going to move. So the shuttle valve right here moves. And I'll see if I can do this right. Shuttle valve is going to move like this. That didn't work. Um, Alright, let's try it here. There we go. I think this will work. Shuttle valve moves just like that. What happens here then is hydraulic fluid can flow through the shuttle valve into the high pressure side of the system and from here into each of the various gear cylinders. So it flows through here into the gear cylinders, it starts pressurizing the bottoms of the cylinders and the gear moves up. In the meantime, the uh, the hydraulic fluid that was trapped in the tops of the cylinders is going to flow backwards out through uh, the low pressure side. It's going to flow back up through the shuttle valve again, and it's going to come back into the reservoir. So there you go. When the gear is fully up and locked, a uh, pressure switch, which exists right here, is going to uh, be activated. Once the gear is fully up and locked and the pressure reaches 1800 PSI, the pressure switch activates, it shuts the pump off, and the shuttle valve moves back into place where it belongs. So the pump shuts off, and then the shuttle valve moves back into place. Just like that. Alright, great. What happens when uh, we want to bring the gear down? Well, the gear is already up. Let's say we want to bring it down. So again, we've got our gear switch here. The gear is in the up position, and we go to flip it down. Well, once again, shuttle valve is going to move. I should have left myself more space for this thing, definitely. Alright, so here we go. Shuttle valve moves, just like that. Shuttle valve moves, which means that hydraulic fluid, the pump engages, hydraulic fluid is going to come from the reservoir through the pump. It's going to be pumped into the low pressure side of the system. From here it's going to be distributed to the tops of the cylinders. There we go, just like that. In the meantime, gravity is pulling the gear down and uh, the high pressure fluid is being squeezed out. So it's being released back into the high pressure um, chamber, manifold, plenum, whatever you want to call it. And then from here, it's going to flow back into the reservoir, or else it's going to flow back into the pump and be recirculated into the system again. So that's how you bring the gear down. Once the gear has reached its fully down and locked position, right here, you've got down limit switches. And the down limit switches, once all three of them are engaged, turn the pump off and move the shuttle valve back where it belongs. So that's how you lower the landing gear. I'll reset the uh, shuttle valve again. Yep, I did that wrong. Let's try that one again. Yep. It's not pretty, but it works. All right. Um, anyway, there you go. So you've got uh, you've got your up, you've got your down. No big deal on either one. Now, how does the emergency gear extend work? Well, let's say that you've got the gear in the up position. If the gear is in the up position, you've got the high pressure side already filled up with flu um, 
high pressure hydraulic fluid just like that and like that. The gear is in the up position and it's being held up by um, high pressure hydraulic fluid. If you open up the uh, if you open up the emergency gear extender, it's just a valve. The shuttle valve doesn't have to move at all. In fact, the shuttle valve can remain uh, closed. What will happen here is that hydraulic fluid will flow from the high pressure side of the system through the... Sh um, yellow was a bad idea. There we go. Hydraulic, hydraulic fluid will flow from the high pressure side through the emergency gear extend and into the low pressure side. Once it's here, it'll start getting distributed to the tops of the cylinders, essentially equalizing the pressure between low and high. When that happens, the gear is going to drop because of gravity and because of the additional pressure provided to it from the, uh, from the low pressure fluid. That's basically it. That's basically the PA44 gear system. Uh, yeah, there you go.